guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight and I thought this week I would do another monster edition and talk to you about one of my gars, my tropical gar, this guy right here, the beast of this tank and definitely the boss. Tropical gars are pretty hard to come by. I think they're roughly considered um, probably the second hardest species to get only after the Cuban that I have that we'll talk about another week. They're also known to be a bit more aggressive than a lot of, than a lot of the more common species. And uh, they can be challenging to keep. And we're gonna discuss that now. So let's take a look. Tropical gars come from the Caribbean and Pacific Slope basins in Central America. And they generally inhabit swamps and rivers. They're the most they're among the most primitive of predatory fishes and are easily recognized by their long snouts as well as their ganoid scales, which is the diamond-shaped patterning you can see. They also are known for their razor sharp conical shaped teeth. And they're considered an ambush predator. Now there's a lot of interesting things about primitive fish in general. For instance, they have a divided swim bladder, um, which means that they can actually breathe atmospheric air as like he just did. So they breathe atmospheric air as well as underwater, meaning they can survive like really low oxygen levels. And they most often will gulp that surface air when the um, oxygen levels are low or when they're in really increased levels of activity. Interesting about tropical gars is that they're a little bit different than a lot of their brethren and that they actually utilize all levels of the aquarium. If you look up in the top part of the frame, you'll see my Cuban up at the surface. And the vast majority of gars really spend most of their time at the surface, tropical gars being a notable exception to that. In fact, my guy spends most of his time in the bottom third with his polypterous friends. Now I'm going to drop some pellets in to encourage him to uh, go to the spot I want so that you guys can see how he feeds. Now, I don't believe in feeding feeders, so all of my monster fish are pellet trained. Right now they're eating um, extreme catfish scrapers, though I grew them out on Hikari Massivore. Tropical gars like a temperature, tropical temperatures, you know, mid 70s to 80. They can take a wide range of pHs from six to eight and a half. I think the most important thing to remember about these guys is that they're very long lived and they're pretty big fish. I mean, tropical gars can get to three feet. In captivity, they generally hang out around two feet, and which is about what mine is. So having a big aquarium is an absolute necessity. In fact, this uh, tank will not be big enough for the full life of these fish and I'm going to have to build or get a bigger one. This is a seven foot by two foot by two foot aquarium. Tropical gars put on most of their size in the first year. Generally they get you know, between 12 and 16 inches in that first year and then they grow slower from their second year on. This guy's probably about 11 years old. And they basically grow for their entire life. After the first two or three years, the growth is very slow. So I probably have a few years until this tank is too small. But the larger the, dilu the, but the, larger the dilution, the easier it is to maintain these guys. And excellent filtration is a must. These are big, meat-eating predators and their poops are enormous. Think like giant sized Tootsie Rolls. So I filter this tank with two FX5s and an AC110. The AC110 is simply for surface disruption. I also utilize Pothos in the hang on back filter in order to be a nutrient exporter. Another thing that's important with GAR is making sure that they really have enough room to turn and have clear visual barriers. I know that the algae in this tank isn't everyone's cup of tea, but it serves a very specific purpose for this fish. 
They are very prone to darting and are surprisingly fast. And the visual barrier of the algae on the back and sides allows him to see where he has to avoid so that he doesn't, Im so that he doesn't injure his back or his beak. Now as, you, now as you can tell from his behavior, you can see that ambush tendency, how he grabs his food, disappears from the frame, and then comes back in for another one. You have to be really, really careful who you stock with guard because they are vicious predators. They tend to really dislike large cichlids, especially those that are silver in color. So I prefer to keep my tank all primitive, just the gars and just the polys. I'm not even going to try and say the Latin. Sorry guys, this is one I'm not particularly comfortable saying. But needless to say, these guys are really awesome. And this tank is truly, these fish are truly my favorites in the entire hobby. Um, I've had all of them between 8 to 10 years and hope to have them for at least another 10. Now, when you look it up, lifespan of a gar is similar to that of an Oscar, 10 to 15 years, but I've heard that they live substantially longer when maintained properly. So I'm hopeful to have this fish for at least another decade and really get to see its full potential. As you can see, they all make quite a mess while eating, which is why that filtration, again, is so important. Now, I feed pellets, and I also supplement these guys with earthworms as well as market shrimp, sometimes some whitefish fillet, but for the most part, they eat a largely pellet diet. Now, I only feed them a couple times a week. They would eat as much as I will feed them, but they are prone to getting a bit chubby, and in the wild, they're opportunistic ambush predators, so they don't eat all the time like a lot of other fishes. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this sort of look at more of my monster fishes. And let me know in the comments below if you'd like for me to continue this series by doing the polys and the other species of gar. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Also, please remember to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know in the box below.